Hi there everyone. In this video, we're going to be taking a quick look at a new VTX from Walksnail, the Walksnail Avatar HD Nano Kit V3. And we're going to be taking a look at this VTX on the bench and seeing how it compares to other VTXs in Walksnail's lineup. We're going to be looking at the image quality from this nano camera with some flight footage, and I'm going to be testing the power output of this VTX so you can see how it compares in terms of range and penetration with other VTXs from Walksnail. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. Hi, Chris from the future here. Walksnail are also releasing a new feature with this VTX called Race Mode, which is specifically designed for FPV racing. I'm not gonna cover it in this video, but make sure you're subscribed because I'm gonna be doing a follow-up video on Race Mode very, very soon. Let's start by looking at some flight footage and talking about image quality. And this flight footage was recorded on board the drone, so we haven't got any losses due to transmission of the video over the air to worry about here. Sometimes with nano size cameras, there is a bit of a concern that the smaller lens elements will lead to a slightly less crisp image. But I'm really pleased to say that this doesn't seem to be the case with this nano camera. The image is just as crisp and clear as the larger micro size camera on other Walksnail VTXs. In terms of image quality, I would say it's definitely better than analog and HD0 and about equivalent to the DJI V1 system. But of course, it's not quite as good in terms of image quality as O3, but that's to be expected. This is a less expensive system and it's not designed to replace a GoPro in the same way. In terms of image quality, there's not much difference between this new NanoKit V3 and previous Walksnail Avatar VTXs. So let's head on over to the bench and have a look at how this system compares in terms of form factor. All right, so let's take a look at this new Walksnail Avatar Mini V3 VTX on the bench. And in the box, you get the Avatar Nano Camera, the Mini V3 VTX, and the standard Walksnail UFL antenna. You also get a bag of mounting hardware and a camera adapter for 90 millimeter camera mounts, and this quick start guide as well. The main differences or upgrades between the old Nano VTX and this new Mini V3 VTX is firstly a wider input voltage range. So you can power this up to 13 volts now from three to 13 volts. And that means you can run it on a up to 3S LiPo without a voltage regulator. This new black aluminum shroud with 20 by 20 threaded mounting holes for M3 screws and a choice of storage options. You can now get an eight gigabyte or a 32 gigabyte version of this VTX for the onboard storage. But all the other specs of this VTX are very similar to the previous Nano VTX. If we flip the VTX over, you can see we've got the USB cable plug here, the soldered wires that go to the plug for the flight controller that are all nicely labeled up, and we have the UFL antenna connector covered by this little piece of metal here. Now, something to be really careful of, if you have an antenna plugged in like this, and you have this screw undone, and this screw still in place, and you accidentally rotate this little piece of metal here, it will shear the UFL antenna connector straight off this board. Ask me how I know. So unless you happen to have a hot air reflow station, if you shear the UFL antenna connector off the board, I mean, I think the VTX is probably toast at that point. So be very careful if you have this antenna in place, make sure you undo both of these screws and remove this little piece of uh, metal completely. In fact, I don't know, I might even suggest just throwing this piece of metal away and strain relieving this antenna some other way because the risk of damaging that connector on the board is really, really high if you have uh, a configuration like I'm showing you here. So just be doubly careful about this. To really understand where this new Mini V3 VTX sits, we have to compare it to a couple of other VTXs in Walksnail's lineup. The Avatar V2 VTX is their kind of full-size VTX. You can run this VTX up to 26 volts or up to a 6S battery voltage. And it has about 450 milliwatts of true RMS output power. The Mini V3 VTX runs up to 13 volts or 3S LiPo battery voltage and you get about 250 milliwatts of true RMS output power as a maximum from this VTX. And then this 1S Lite VTX runs up to just five volts. So that's up to a 1S LiPo battery voltage. And you get about 250 milliwatts of RMS output from this one. So you can see that these two are really very, very similar with the only difference being um, 
obviously the extra durability that's afforded by this shroud, the slightly wider voltage range going up to 13 volts, and the choice of storage options, obviously having a 32 gigabyte storage version of this. All right, let's take some weights now, starting with the Mini V3 VTX. It's coming in at 20.7 grams. If we compare that to the Walksnow Avatar V2, that comes in about nine grams heavier with the larger camera. And if we compare it to the 1S Lite VTX, that comes in about nine or 10 grams lighter. So you can see the Mini V3 VTX sits right in the middle of the weight range. All right, let's do some quick VTX power testing with this new Avatar VTX. I've got the VTX connected up to this true RMS power meter, and we can see the output from the power meter here on this display, with this number here being the milliwatts of output power. Currently, the VTX is set to 25 milliwatts, and we're getting almost exactly 25 milliwatts output. If I change up to the 200 milliwatt power setting, You can see that now that I've set it to 200 milliwatts, the power has significantly increased. We're up at about 152 milliwatts or so of output power. If we go up even higher, go up to 500 milliwatts, you can see that the power level steps up again, and now we're getting about 240 milliwatts of output power from the VTX. If I increase to the 700 milliwatt setting, you'll see that the power level doesn't increase any further. And if I go to 1,000 and 1,200 milliwatts, so let's go up to 1,200 milliwatts now. And at 1,200 milliwatts, again, we're still getting about 244 milliwatts of output power. Now, this is something that is true of all of the V2 Avatar VTXs. They hit their maximum power output on the 500 milliwatt setting in the goggles. You don't get any more output power from the VTX going up above 500 milliwatts. So that's just something to be aware of with these new VTXs. You can set them to the higher power modes, but you're gonna get um, the same output power from 500 milliwatts upwards. Looking at the results of the power output testing, we can see that the new Nano V3 VTX has very similar power output on the different settings to the 1S Lite VTX. And its power output is a little bit less than the Avatar V2 full-size VTX. Any differences that we see between the 1S Lite VTX and the Nano V3 are more than likely just due to variation device to device rather than any particular difference in the design. But we can see that the power output of the Nano V3 is a bit less than the full size VTX, which I guess is as we would expect given that it's operating at a lower voltage and it's a smaller board and package overall. All right, so that brings us to the end of the video and it's time for the conclusions. Who is this Avatar Nano V3 VTX right for? Well, I think the real comparison here is between the Nano V3 VTX and the Walksnail 1S Lite VTX. Both of these VTXs give you the same image quality, the same output power, so you get the same range and penetration. The 1S Lite VTX is a lot lighter weight, but the Nano V3 has a wider input voltage range and extra protection from that metal shroud. In general, I think the choice is gonna be a bit difficult between the two. If you're running a lighter weight build, like a 2S or 3S build, where you might want to power the VTX directly off battery voltage, you're either gonna to want to decase the Nano V3 VTX to get the weight down, or you're gonna to want to go with the 1S Lite VTX and power it off a five volt regulator. If, however, you're looking at a heavier build, maybe a four or five inch build, where the extra durability of that metal shroud is valuable, and the extra weight, not too much of a problem, you're probably gonna be running a 4S or maybe even a 6S battery, and you're not gonna be able to power that VTX off of the battery voltage. You're gonna to want to run it off a regulator, either a five volt reg, nine volt, or maybe 12 volt regulator. And in that case, you might be able to work with the 1S Lite VTX just fine as well, because if you're running it off a five volt regulator, you can run either of them off five volts. So that's just something to be aware of. When you're running the VTX off of a regulator, 
you won't see the battery voltage in the OSD menu of the Walksnail VTX unless you have it all correctly set up and connected to your flight controller over UART. So that's just something to be aware of. It's a little bit of extra configuration to get that battery voltage on the OSD compared to if you're just powering the flight controller off of battery voltage just normally. So that's something to think about. Overall, I would say that this is a nice offering. It's, it's an interesting product, but it's always going to be that trade-off between do you go for the full-size VTX and run it off battery voltage, the Avatar V2? Do you go for the 1S Lite VTX and get the weight savings and power it off a 5-volt reg? I don't know where the Nano V3 sort of fits into that. But now that you understand the trade-offs, you will be able to pick which Avatar VTX is right for your build. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in picking up any of the Avatar VTXs that I've talked about today, there are links down in the video description. And they are affiliate links, which means that if you use them and make a purchase, I get a small commission and it helps support the channel, helps support the work that I'm doing, and it doesn't cost you a penny. If you'd like to help me out directly, I also have a Patreon and I'll put a link to that down in the video description as well. Thank you for your support and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Happy flying.